and running here in a second. There we go. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 The devil can't stop God. Somebody, somebody said yesterday on a prayer call, they said that the devil is a, a, a liar and a loser. Oh, yeah. Come on, give God a hand. You can be seated. Amen. The devil is a liar and a loser. And I want to thank the Lord for his goodness because God always gets the victory. Always remember that in your life, God will always get the what? The victory. Even if you've ever watched a sports game and sometimes when Tom Brady was playing, he could be down by 14 points with three minutes left to go in the entire game. And it wasn't even the, the uh, Patriots ball. And they said, never give Tom Brady the ball with time left on the clock. And before you know it, 20 seconds left on the clock, all they need is a touchdown. Tom Brady drives 98 yards all the way down the field, scores the touchdown, wins the game. You know why? Because all his teammates knew that if Tom had the ball, you were probably going to get the victory. I want to tell you, Jesus is the best quarterback you'll ever have. And Jesus has a better winning percentage than Tom Brady. Because Jesus has never lost a battle. Anybody want a God that never loses a battle? Anybody wants a Savior that can't fail? Oh, I don't want an attorney in court that wins 90% of the time. The Bible says Jesus is a mediator. It says he's an attorney. I want somebody who wins 100% of the time. Jesus always wins. And here's the thing. He always wins for you. He wins for you. Somebody say, he wins for me. Yes, he does. He wins. He wins. He wins. So I give honor to God. I give honor to Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit. Oh, you need him. You, we need him today. Amen. Because he will lead us and guide us in all paths of truth and righteousness. Uh, let me give homage to, uh, I want to give honor to a former, former uh, member of Harvest. He's, he's in the military, but he was a member a long time ago. And uh, his name is uh, Francis Yusuf. Some of you remember him. If you remember him, say praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, today when I woke up, I found out that the weather was going to be over 70 degrees. And um, I didn't want to wear a heavy suit. So the Spirit said, well, why don't you put on the, the outfit Brother Francis got you? Because Brother Francis is a Nigerian brother. He would always wear these nice outfits to church. And I said, oh, my God. I said, where did you get that? He said, do you want one? I said, absolutely. And he said, well, what color do you like? I said, blue. But I said, you surprised me. I said, I said make it look like a pastor's. Uh, uh, outfit and he had this made in Nigeria and had it sent to me and I've had this thing for about eight years and I just love it it's comfortable it's easy to preach in and you look good come on give the Lord a hand so I do I give honor to, to Francis as well brother Francis Yusuf and his wife he, he has the, one of the she, she's so much fun her name is sister Joy and they would teach us all the African songs during service. Oh, Shea ba Baba. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I won't go down that road. But I want to thank God for all of the saints of God. Amen. Isn't it nice to have good memories of people? 
Amen. Praise the Lord. A every time uh, you separate from somebody, we're going to talk a little bit about separation here in a second, but every time you separate from somebody, don't make it bad. Amen. Try to do it as amicably as possible. Praise the Lord. So I give honor to that. And um, I do want to also congratulate um, all of you who, who are former Army. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, yesterday was the annual Army Navy football game. That is a big deal for anybody who's in the Army or the Navy, and and and, and it is a large event. And it was a great, great, great game. But Army edged us out, and so I want to say say congratulations to them. God bless you, brother Van. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. Today we want to get into the Word of God. We're going to get into this Word. And we're going to be today in Acts, the 20th chapter. We're going to read today the 32nd through the 38th verse. These will be our, this will be our lesson text. And as we're looking over in Acts, the 20th chapter, and the 32nd through the 38th verse, just know that the Apostle Paul is on his third missionary journey and he has been traveling from city to city to city uh, ministering the gospel to the saints and now he has come back and he's uh, meeting with some elders some Ephesian elders and he's about to give them some news and I want you to see their reaction I want you to put yourself in the saints shoes not in the Apostle Paul's shoe necessarily, but in the saints, in the church members' shoes. I want you to do that for me this morning. If you're able to, I'm going to ask that you would stand for the reading of the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad to see everybody's face, that you've made it. I'm so glad that this is the, the Christmas season. Amen. Because now you can say Jesus at work and people don't get mad at you. Amen. And, they, and when you say Merry Christmas, hey, nobody can stop you from saying Merry Christmas. You tell them Merry Christmas. You just tell them, right? Because everybody wants to say Happy Holiday. Oh, oh no. It's, he's the reason. Come on. He's the reason for the season. You wouldn't even have a day off if it wasn't for Jesus. That's what you tell them. You say you wouldn't even. I'm just going to let that go. So God is so good. Amen. Acts the 20th chapter and the 32nd verse. The Bible reads, And now, brethren, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the members of this particular church, the, the Ephesian elders. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Somebody say sanctified. Paul says, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. In other words, I have not asked you for your money. I have not preached for money. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. He says, I worked with my own hands to supply my own needs. Verse 35. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus and how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. He kneeled down and did what? Pray. He kneeled down and prayed with them all. But look at their reaction, verse 37. And they all wept sore. They, they, they cried uncontrollably. They all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. So they, they gathered around him. They hugged him. They cried uncontrollably and they kissed him. Verse 38. Sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake that they should see his face no more. They were never going to see Paul again. And they accompanied him unto the ship. I want to just bring your attention to, the, to verse 37 that we just read. And they all wept sore. And they all wept sore. 
Let me speak to you today very briefly from the subject, who weeps for you? That's something to think about. Who? Who weeps for you? Let's look to the Lord. We're going to bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless your name in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your son, Jesus. Bless your people. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen, amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand as you take your seats. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Since you know how I am, I like to be very consistent on what we've been teaching and what we've been learning because the more consistent I am on building blocks of learning for you, the better you will learn the Word of God. Amen. So for those of you who are new or are just visiting today, I want you to know that we, have, we as a church have been studying the book of Acts. And I, and I want to tell you that I found out that Acts lives up to its name. I mean, it's full of action. It, the book of Acts, I'm, I like to binge watch TV shows that I do like. And the book of Acts is a show that I would binge watch. There are so many events that take place in Acts. There are so many themes that take place in Acts. I mean, if you just, if you just want to read something other than uh, something they put on the bookshelf and you want to read something that's good and interesting, know that Acts has uh, every theme. It has good versus evil. It has demon powers versus the power of God, right? It's got great joy in certain places. Then it's got great pain in other places. There is sickness in the book of Acts, but there is also healing in the book of Acts. Some people are getting set free in the book of Acts, and some people are going to prison every time they go to a new city, right? Everything is in the book of Acts. And here's one thing that really stuck out to me. There are friendships that are made in the book of Acts. But then there are also friendships that are divided, separated in the book of Acts. I wonder how many of you don't answer, but I wonder how many of us have ever had a good friend that we've been divided from, separated from, usually on bad terms. In the book of Acts, there are good times and there are bad times. But here's the thing. Out of the entire range of events that happen in the book of Acts, what's accompanied is a range of emotions. And when you read it, I, I, when I read it, I find that there's one emotion that has amazed me over this last uh, month or so of us reading the scriptures, and it's the grief that is expressed by the saints through the shedding of tears. It's the grief. And the Bible calls it weeping, right? Now, I, I don't want you to worry. This is not going to be a sad sermon. And you, you're not going to walk out crying. You're not going to leave worse than you came in Jesus' name. Amen. But I just want you to know, I've simply been impressed with, with how much the saints loved Paul. I wonder if any of us love somebody other than our own family members with such a great love that you would weep if you thought you would never see them again. Of course your mother, of course your father, of course the, the people that are closest to you, your brother and sister, but do you have anybody in your life that you would weep for if you thought you would never see them again? Hmm. So what does it mean when somebody weeps, when someone, when someone weeps? The, the, the dictionary, Merriam-Webster says that to weep actually means to express deep sorrow or grief. There it is. Usually by shedding what? Usually by shedding tears. What that means is when someone weeps over you, they must care for you deeply. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but when someone weeps for you, it actually draws them close to you. There's a, there's, a, there's a closeness that takes place. You've experienced this if anybody's ever wept in your presence. 
Because usually the immediate reaction when you see someone weep in your presence is empathy. Because you know what it feels like to be in pain. Very few people run away when they see somebody weeping. Because they care about them. And because weeping is a powerful display of emotions. And so in today's text, in verses 32 through 38, we see that the Apostle Paul is preparing to leave this city called Miletus, and he's separating from these Ephesian elders with whom he has poured into mightily, and they now love him. And they're saying farewell. And he's telling them that they will never see him again because he's preparing to go to Jerusalem. And they don't want him to go. They just don't want him to leave. They know he has a mission. They know he's been called by God. You know, you have a mission. You've been called by God. But you have to know that when you've been called by God, you cannot let other people's soul stop you from fulfilling God's will for you. I say the soul because your soul possesses, I do this, but your soul is up here. I say the soul because your soul possesses your emotions. It possesses your emotions right? Your will, your intellect. It's your personality. You can't let another person's soul stop you from fulfilling the will of God. Amen. And so, uh, 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 so, so, so they didn't want him to go. And when he said, he, he said, I definitely have to go to Jerusalem, they started weeping. Okay, so they started weeping. And so when I was reading this, the Spirit said to me, as they hugged him and kissed Paul, the Spirit said to me, who would weep for you? Like, like who? Other than your family, of course my wife would weep for me. Brothers and sisters. But who would weep for you? And, and I think that's a question we should all ask ourselves. This is the holiday time of year, the Christmas season. I think this is a question we should all ask ourselves. Who would weep for us? Hmm. So then I went into prayer and I was praying about the, uh, 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 the message and, and I was asking the Lord, well, Lord, who would weep for me? I started feeling bad. <laughs> who, who have you impacted in your life that it would actually hurt them to, see, to never see you again? So when I went into prayer, the Spirit began to speak to me because I was asking the Lord. I said, Lord... I, I don't know why this is bothering me so much. And the Spirit said, there are four types of people who will weep for you. And if you're writing this down, number one is good family. Notice I said what? <laughs> good family. Of course, you know, a mother... You, you, you get this image of a mother weeping over an injured or sick child. We, we have wars going on in the world today. And most of the time, psychological warfare has them put images of mothers and fathers carrying their babies uh, that have been injured. That, 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 that's an image we have. A, a parent will weep over their child. Can you imagine when Mary, Jesus' mother, was standing at the foot of the cross looking at her son hang there in a painful state of being knowing that life was passing from him. You can imagine that Mary was standing there weeping. And then Jesus turns to John the disciple and he says, John, please take care of my mother. Oh, Jesus. He hands over the responsibility and the assignment of sonship from himself to John. So you know that Mary was weeping for her son Jesus. The Bible also says there was another Mary named Mary Magdalene who wept for her brother Lazarus. Who had died suddenly from a sickness. And Jesus didn't come in time. He may not come when you want him. How many times have you ever thought that God didn't come in time? He, he wasn't listening, didn't answer your prayer. I don't, Lord, I, how come you left me hanging? You just left me out here. But before you know it, you look back and God was working a miracle and you didn't even know it. God was moving people out of your way and you didn't even know it. 
One sister just testified on the prayer call yesterday that she had been praying about a certain thing on her job. And, and before she knew it, God had already been working to move that person. You, you know, you, what you want is you want God to promote your enemies out of your way. You hear what I said? You don't, don't wish bad on them. Lord, bless that person with a new house in Paraguay. <laughs> Give them a permanent vacation home in the Azores. Just bless them, Lord, exceeding and abundantly, just so I can have some peace at work. But God had already been working, and she got back to work and found out that the Lord blessed, promoted that lady, and now that lady's out of her hair. Come on, somebody. Uh, you might need that blessing. But th the Bible says that Mary Magdalene was weeping over Lazarus because Lazarus had died, but Jesus hadn't showed up in time. But the Bible says when he, Jesus does come, she falls down at his feet and begins to weep. And she said, Jesus, had you just been here on time, my brother would not have died. She was weeping for him because she was good family. That was, his, that was her brother. And then the Bible says that when Jesus saw her weeping, he groaned. Ooh, Jesus. That's empathy. He saw her weeping. He groaned. He groaned. And, 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 and then, so you, ha you have a good idea that family, good family, will weep for you. They will. Let me give you number two. The second type of person that will weep for you are good friends. But they have to be what kind of friends? Oh, Lord, they got to be good friends, they. They've got to be good friends. Because there are at least two accounts in the Bible, including our lesson text, the one we read at the very beginning, where the apostles, I'm sorry, where the saints of God wept because Paul told them that he had to leave. He departed from them and they wept. Acts 21 has an account where they wept for Paul and Acts 20 has an account where they wept for Paul. They were friends of of Paul. They loved Paul like he was their own family. They would house him when he came in town. They would let him stay. Any, don't raise your hand. Anybody have any family members that you love them but they ain't staying at your house? I know you don't. I know, I know you don't. I, I know you don't. He said, oh yeah, BB's coming. BB's coming. Oh, what, what hotel BB's staying in? Everybody has that family member. Everybody, everybody has that family member. So not only did the, did the saints of God, not only were they Paul's friends and weeped for him, but here, let me tell you something else. You never want to be in a relationship where the love is one-sided. You don't want to have a friend where you're the one doing all the loving. You're the one doing all the picking up, all the dropping off. You're the one always buying the lunch. You're the one always uh, uh, looking out for that person. There should be some reciprocation. No, what's it called? Reciprocity. That's my one word for the day. Leave it right there. Write that down because you're not getting another one. You need the type of friends that, that they, they, they reciprocate. You, you get it back from them. Anybody? Don't raise your hand. But anybody ever had a friend where you, after a while, the Spirit or God or the Holy Ghost, he, he said to you, you're doing more for them. And they don't do anything for you. They don't even say, you look nice today. Mm -hmm. You need people in your life that will pour into you. Not that will constantly detract from you. Right? Because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. In other words, so does one brother sharpen the countenance or strengthen his friend. Amen. So we need some friends like that. But the Bible says that Paul had friends that loved him, but Paul also loved them back. Acts the 20th chapter in the 19th verse, Paul says, I loved you with tears. It, Paul says, I have served the Lord with all humility. And then he said, and with many tears and temptations which befell me. He said, he said, listen, this ministry that I've been doing, he said, I've had to shed tears for you. Mm. Good friends, good friends will weep for you. Jesus, the Bible says, wept for Lazarus. 
That's what the Bible says in, in, in John 11 and 35 and 36. Right after he saw Mary, the Bible says right after Jesus saw Mary weeping, it says he groaned within himself. But then it says, then Jesus wept. He cried for his good friend. You need a friend like Jesus. He said, Jesus wept. And then, somebody saying then. And then Mary Magdalene, after Jesus had been crucified, the Bible says that she wept for Jesus after the crucifixion, John 20 and 15. It says, so okay, keep in mind, Jesus had, had been uh, buried after the crucifixion, had been risen from the dead, and now was walking in front of the tomb. But the Bible says that Mary didn't know it was Jesus. Her eyes had been beholden, and she thought it was the gardener. And so the Bible says that Jesus says to her, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? And it's almost as if he wants to say, it's me. But she can't see it. Have you ever been through something and you can't tell it's God? People treat you a certain way, but you can't tell. That's the hand of the Lord trying to get you out of a circumstance that you should have never been in in the first place. And then when you look back years later, you say, Lord, I thank you for getting me away from that man. I thank you for moving me out of that city. Lord, I thank you for being such a blessing to me. Listen, all pain is not bad pain. I know there's a saying that says no pain, no gain. If you, if you live ways, you know, no pain, no gain. That's not always true, but, it, but it's true in some instances. <laughs> Somebody said, good friends, good friends will weep for you. Okay, so we know that good family will weep for you. We know that good friends will weep for you. I want to give you the third one, and I want to watch your reaction. Good enemies. <laughs> Some of you are saying, good enemy. Well, that's an oxymoron. A, a good, what's, a good, what's a good enemy? Listen, let me tell you this. A good enemy uh, are those people that the Lord allowed to come into your life to elevate you to the place you are today. Let me say that again. A good enemy are those people the Lord allowed to come into your life to get you where you are today. Did you know that there are some people that had they not come into your life, you wouldn't be walking in the blessings of God you're walking in today. Oh yeah, that's a good enemy right there. That's a good enemy. Now listen, I will agree with you that good enemies may not always pray for you, but they certainly are a blessing. Oh, you got to know that every one of us needed some help to get to where we are today. And sometimes help comes in the form of a stepping stool. The Bible says to step on the devil... The Bible says that the, that the Son of Man is going to step on the head of the devil, right? You need a stepping stool, but sometimes that stepping stool comes in the form of a good enemy. Ooh. Did you know that a good enemy teaches you how to pray? Oh, uh, come on, somebody, anybody. I know some of you got a prayer life right now because of that good enemy, that good enemy. So, some of you learned how to fast when the good enemy came into your life. I want to thank God for some good enemies. Oh, I give him glory. I give him glory. I, 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 listen, I don't know about you, but I've had many good enemies and there are people in my life, there are people in my life that I thank God for. I do. I thank God for them. I'm not mad. I'm not upset. I'm not holding any grudges because had it not been for them, I wouldn't be walking the way I'm walking today. I wouldn't be moving in the spirit the way I'm moving in the spirit today. I wouldn't have a prayer life the way I have a prayer life today had it not been for a good enemy. You need a good enemy. Oh my God. He'll help you to walk right. She'll help you to talk right. They'll help you to live right. They'll help you to come to church right. You'll stop hitting and missing. And you'll be there every Sunday. You'll stop wondering if you're going to pay tithe. And you'll give them every Sunday. Because you say, Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you've been so gracious. 
Lord, you've been so kind. Could have been broke. Could have been dead and gone. How many of you know sometimes the Lord will reveal something to you? And when it reveals it, it saves you a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money. I had a saint in the church a long time ago, and she was going through a little something, and they were going through a little something, and she said this and this and that and that. And I said, girl, you better go check the accounts. I didn't say that. I said, I said uh, you may want to check the, the bank accounts through great wisdom. Do you know that she went and checked that account? She locked that thing up, the one over here and the one over there, and da-da-da-da, and that man was going to run off with everything. Save her money! You know, God is a good God. Oh, uh, he'll keep you. Yes, he will. So, so we do. Every once in a while, you, we need a good enemy. We need a good enemy. But I want to tell you, it's not always easy. It's not always pleasant. It's not always convenient. It's not always comfortable. It's not always fun. Oh, but it's profitable. Thank God for a good enemy. So we need some good family. We need some good friends. Oh yeah, we need those. We also need some good enemies. But I will tell you that most importantly, I do know one person who will always weep for you. I know one person who will always go down on his knees for you. I know one person who will always go to the Father for you. I know one person that will save you sometimes when you don't want to be saved. Pick you up out of the muck and the miry clay. One person. Come on, somebody. You know what you need? The last thing you need is a good God. Oh, you need a good... Yeah, because after that good enemy leaves, you're going to need a good God. The Bible, now he said, well, well does, does God weep for me? The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 18, it says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. In other words, it says he's nigh unto the brokenhearted. And, and, and it's almost as if the scripture is saying that God will weep for the brokenhearted. But I will give, it, give you this, at the very least, we know that, that if someone is your friend, they can feel your pain. And at the very least, God can feel the pain of those who are brokenhearted. Because he had given his son Jesus to die for the sins of the world. He had given his son Jesus to lay his life down so that you might have life. Did you know sometimes death has to come so that you can have life? Sometimes somebody's got to go down so that you can come up. Sometimes people have to decrease that you might increase. So God sent Jesus. And I want to tell you, 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 how can you be close to someone who is brokenhearted and not feel their pain? No. The Bible says that we have a high priest. Hebrews 4 and 15 says we have a high priest who can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. It says every weakness you have. You see, infirmity is a weakness. It's a physical, a mental, and a moral weakness. The Bible says Jesus can be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He understands when you get weak. He understands when you get low. He understands when anxiety is fighting you. He understands when depression is knocking on your door. He understands when friends turn their back on you. He understands when nobody will speak to you. He understands people not wanting you around. He understands when nobody invites you to their house. He understands what it's like to be hungry. He understands what it's like to be broke. He understands what it's like to have money. He understands what it's like to go to jail. Jesus understands that he can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. Every one of your weaknesses, Jesus understands. He, feel, he felt pain just like we do. He was frustrated 
just like we are. He was betrayed just like we were. They turned his, they, he was, had his back, their, their, the friends turned their back on him just like they've done to you. I want to encourage you. Jesus cried just like you and I cried. Jesus weeped. But the Bible says not only did Jesus weep for himself, but he weeped for you. The Bible says that when Jesus got to Israel, he was standing in Jerusalem and he stood on top of a hill and he looked out over Jerusalem. Some of the saints who we all went to Jerusalem, we stood in the same place where Jesus stood and looked over the city of David, looked over Jerusalem. And the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He just began to weep for Israel. Listen, you may say, well, uh, I'm not Israel. I'm not Jewish. I'm not. Listen, you're a descendant of Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I want to tell you because you're a descendant of Abraham. And if you have believed on Jesus Christ, you have been adopted into the family of sonship. You are now sons and daughters of God. You, are, you have now been grafted into this olive branch. And now Jesus, when he weeped back then, he weeped for you. And I want to tell you, when he sees you going through, he's weeping for you. When he sees you struggling, he's weeping for you. When he sees you in pain, he's weeping for you. When he sees the hurt, he's weeping for you. I thank God for a Savior who's weeping for us. So the next time the devil tries to fight you in your mind and tells you that nobody cares, nobody's worried about you, nobody wants you, nobody's on your side. The next time he tells you that, you tell him, no, Satan, you are, not only are you a liar, but you are a loser. What you tell him? Because Jesus weeps for me. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. Somebody give God a great big hand. I want you to stand. Jesus. If that question ever comes to your mind, who is weeping for me? The answer is Jesus. There's a song we used to sing and it says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's the answer. Then it goes on and it says he's the answer for the world today. Ooh, Jesus. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So maybe today by some, by some rare chance, you don't have family that will weep for you. And maybe there's a possibility that some of us don't have a friend that will weep for us. And you know your enemy is not going to do much for you, don't you? Except take you, a little, take you a little higher. But be encouraged. Somebody say, be encouraged. Jesus cares. And he will weep for you. The Bible says, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Here's what we're going to pray for today. I'm going to ask if Pastor Yaz would come down. I'm going to ask if Elder Tony would come down. I need just a little help in the prayer line. Uh, Brother Chris, you mind coming down helping us to pray? Helping us pray? You're going to come over here, Brother Chris. Now, listen very carefully to, to what we'd like to pray for today. Some of you have been going through a season in your life recently where you're going through a season of weeping. And people are not seeing you do this. It might be late in the midnight hour. And you hold yourself together all day long. You go to work looking strong. You talk to your family on the phone and you sound strong. 
You come to church and you pretend to be strong. But when we get in our quiet space, some of you don't even make it home before you break out in tears. I want to encourage you that Jesus is weeping for you, but we also want to pray for you today. No one needs to know what you've been weeping over, but you do need to know that somebody cares. And when we open up the prayer or the altar, if you've been weeping, it's as if I hear the devil say, even within the last 30 days, just within the, within the last 30 days, sometimes you'll get in the car, you might be at a stoplight, and you will break out in tears. And I just felt that when I said it. It made me want to cry. You'll just break out in tears. I want you to come to one of the ministers or myself, and we're going to, to, to com pray comfort for you and pray a blessing for you and pray, pray your strength in the Lord. That's one of the things we want to pray for. I also would like to pray for blood conditions today. Whether it's high blood pressure, it's some type of disorder, some type of blood condition. I don't know if it's that you, you I don't know if it's that you, uh, you, you bruise easily, your blood won't clot properly, but it's some type of blood disorder. But whatever that is, I want you to come in my prayer line. The Spirit's going to heal you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then last but not least, you may begin to come. In the last but not least, we want to pray for anyone who's here today and you are not saved today. But just hearing what God will do for you, just hearing that Jesus cares for you, just knowing that there's a Savior who voluntarily gave his life for us, you want him you would like to be saved. If you are not saved today, I encourage you to come right now to the altar. The Lord will save you. He will forgive you. There is nothing you have done that the Lord will not forgive you of today. Why don't you come to the altar today in Jesus' name? All glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together like this. Lord, I just want to thank you. Song says, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just. Lord, I just want to thank you. It says, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. For being so good. For being so good to me. That's the whole song. Come on, everybody. Let's sing that. Lord, I just want to thank you. I say, Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you. And then put your hand on yourself and say, for being so good to me. He's been so good to us. Hasn't he been good? Oh, he's been so good. 
He's been so merciful. I, I know you may not feel the way you want to feel in your body, but, but he's been, there's people so much worse off. The Lord has been so merciful. Thank him for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank him for being clothed and in your right mind. So many people don't have a right mind. So many people don't know what day of the week it is. Lord, I want to thank you for being so good to us. In Jesus' name, give God a great big hand. Yes, Lord. Amen. All right, so you may be seated very briefly before we dismiss. Uh, did we greet our guest today? All right. Let me ask this question. Is there anybody today? Let me just ask this. Not, not only if you are a first-time guest today, but if, if you are not a member of Harvest Church, we're just going to ask that you would raise your hand. We would just want to put some love on you and, and bless you. I see two right here, my other two here. You're not a member, you're not a member, anybody else? You're not a member just yet? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord one more time. God bless you. Good to see you again. Amen. My brother here, is this your first time here on the, on the right in the green shirt? Second time. Okay. Amen. I I, I saw that bicep. I said, I think I've seen that bicep before. I think I've seen. Uh, amen. God is so good. Isn't it nice? You, you want to you know people are glad you're there. Amen. We're so glad to have all of you in the house of God today. So glad for all who have joined us online. I want to remind you about something before we close today. A couple of things. I want to remind you for anyone who is um, desiring to get a better hold on their financial circumstance. Um, it doesn't mean that you're, you, you don't have to be struggling to take this Financial Peace University class. Um, you might be, might not be. I know people who are doing just fine, but they, they want to they wanna re reaffirm their foundation. Amen. If you're interested in taking the Financial Peace University class that we're going to be offering starting January 5th, we ask that you would go online to that website, events.hch.com, and register for it. It is $70 per individual, and I think, or is it 70 or 80? $80 per individual, and I think it's also $80 for a couple. So if you're married, you can register one time, and you both will have that, that book. Um, so you can do that. So that's a blessing. So, uh, so we, we encourage you to do that. We're going to, uh, my Pastor Yas and I will be the instructors of that course, and we ourselves have been through Financial Peace University, and, um, and we are doing okay. <laughs> we, we, we have uh, implemented the disciplines, and they've been a great blessing. But what you're going to find is it really, it really, it is a mirror. It speaks heavily to us as, individual, as, as individuals because it shows us where we put our money. Right, and so because one of the things you'll do is journal, and you'll also write down what you spent your monies on for that past week. So God is going to be good, and He's going to move for you. Um, you have to first, if you want to invest in life, you must first invest in yourself, because you're worth it, amen. And your family's future is worth it. So I encourage you to do that, um, and and I think you have to do that by December 10th, which is today. The reason is, is because we have to order the the materials so that you can have all of your materials in time. So, uh, so thank you for that. The other thing is I want to thank you for getting online and registering for the Christmas dinner. I'm so proud of y'all. <laughs> I'm so proud of y'all because we, uh, we always want to make sure we're doing things with the spirit of excellence. And so we needed to make sure we had plenty of time to plan the, the amount of food and all of those things. And you guys did such a great job. We are maxed out in attendance. So give yourselves a hand. I will tell you, I almost got in trouble the other day because Pastor Yaz and I went to Olive Garden and we were, uh, we were eating. We we're almost done with our meal. And the server, we began to minister or talk to the server. And, and then I said to the server, I said, hey, you should come to our Christmas dinner. And Pastor Yaz was like, we're all maxed out. We're, we're all maxed out. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know me, I was like, yeah, come on, you'll be my, our personal guest, so on and so forth, da 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 So, so prayerfully, the, the young lady will come, amen, she's a young, young uh, uh, like 19-year-old who could be a student or go in the military, and so we can all entreat her, amen, amen, so, uh, so I may have b busted the count, 
Amen. But God is good. His mercy endures forever. So I think, I think that that is everything. Can you give our worship team a great big hand? Amen. Oh, Lord, I want to thank you. They have been such a blessing, and, the, and I love how they incorporated those uh, the Christmas songs. Amen. Amen. C come, let us, uh, uh, come let us adore him. And then you move that into Emmanuel. I was like, all right, all right. You did that. You did that. Amen. Because this, this is the season, right? This is the season. So I want to encourage you, if we can kind of throw, uh, throw in another Christmas song next week and, and uh, do a little uh, smash, whatever you call it, I'm all about it. Let's do it. Because uh, I don't know if you noticed this. Did you all notice that when we began to sing, Come Let Us Adore Him, all of you sang? Do you know why all of you sang? Because we all know the song. And we always want, worship leaders should always want to, for the congregation to participate. So if you sing songs they know, we will all sing. Amen. So, so it sounded so good. Thank you so much. Let's all stand. Amen. Praise his name. Oh, glory to God. All right. Praise the Lord. If, and if there's anybody, um, just think about this after service. If there's one or two brothers that uh, for some reason you say, hey, uh, Pastor Rob, I want to uh, be a blessing and uh, help out in the church house today. I'm going to come over with Pastor Yaz. I'm going to help her get some things lined up so that we can do certain things. But then I'm going to work in another area and just get some things accomplished while we're there. Um, so if there's one or two brothers that want to... Um, you want to come it's probably going to be we have to get something to eat and then such such and such so it's probably going to be 3 30 3 30 would be a good time and uh and it's no obligation i'm just saying if if you had time and you say hey i want to come over and help pastor rob for an hour hour and a half whatever it is all right i put that out there 3 30 so i think that's everything can we sing our closing song today oh give thanks to the lord oh, give thanks good job sister time that would like additional information about the church about harvest church maybe you're interested in joining or you just like additional information you can meet my wife and i back in the welcome lounge immediately after service and we'll be there to meet you god bless you have a great sunday take your sunday into into the monday god bless you